you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready for the van tour? Welcome to the Lindy Banner van tour. We'll show you around our little home on wheels. There's the van. We can do the tour. Should we do the tour? Let's do the tour. Welcome to Lindy Banner. We're Gabby and Sam, and this is our four legged furry friend, Daisy. Follow us on our adventures in our self converted sprinter van as we document our time on and off the road traveling around the UK, Lithuania, and the rest of Europe. Thanks for all of your support so far, and if you're joining us for the first time, don't forget to like the video, subscribe, and turn on the notifications so you never miss a video. Hi everyone, welcome to our van tour. We have a 2009 medium wheelbase Mercedes Sprinter van. We got it about a year ago and it was completely just a shell, so we converted it completely from scratch ourselves. And I'm so excited to show you around. So, as Gabby said, it's 2009 Sprinter. It had 68,000 miles on it when we got it with full Mercedes uh, service history. So we were super happy about that. Um, but we have done some modifications to the outside of the van and the underneath of the van a little bit as well. Starting from the front, uh, obviously we've colour coded the badges, just sprayed them black. Um, we've got press number plates, uh, just gives a bit of a nice sort of vibe. Um, I've replaced the windscreen because the original windscreen had a horrible chip in it and every time the sun would you know, beat down on the windscreen it would reflect right into my eye. And although apparently it wasn't an MOT failure, um, yeah it was really annoying so I went ahead and replaced the windscreen. Moving on to the side, uh, we're running our winter tyres and the reason we're running these at the moment in June is because we're on this big trip and we are going to be driving in the winter. Our trip is going to turn into a winter trip at some point and we're also going to be driving in Lapland as well. So despite it being the summer time like August when we're going to be there, um, there might be some flurries of snow and stuff. And of course you can use them in the summer anyway. and. We've had these tyres on all of our vans because we bought them when we lived in Sweden. We've also painted the wheels black and then up here we've got our wind deflectors which are super handy when we need some ventilation through the cab. If we're using the cab to you know, dry clothes or towels and stuff, we usually use a bungee strap between the handles so we can crack the window open, get some airflow and even if it's raining it doesn't matter because we've got these bad boys. Coming onto our handles we've got these armour plates, they're like four mil thick stainless steel plates on all of the handles and we had them on the last sprinter as well. They're a bit more of a visual deterrent than anything really but they do stop anyone trying to stab with a screwdriver and break into the van. We've put this bonded window in. We've got one window in the van uh, and it's an opening one so we can get some ventilation in the van. We had the same window in the old van and it worked perfectly so we went ahead and did that again. And then in the back we've got our fiberglass flares. Uh, they weren't cheap but it, obviously it means that we can sleep widthways in the van. So these were already black when we got them um, so we didn't need to get them painted which was really handy. Just cut the hole, bonded it on the same way that you put a window on. Just coming around to the back of the van we've got our single window in the back door. We haven't got one in this door and everyone says oh why didn't you put two windows in? Well because why didn't we put two windows in? <laughs> I think one's enough. It's kind of nice inside. We'll show you in a second. Yeah, yeah. It's really nice inside. And if there was a window on this side, it would be sort of, ah, it would be nice, but maybe a bit pointless. I don't know. Uh, and the whole van's a bit asymmetric because one flare is bigger than the other anyway. So ah, it kind of balances out. The huge thing that we've got is the reversing camera up here, which has been an absolute game changer. You swap it out with the original brake light and it was super cheap like 60 or 70 pounds and yeah obviously it makes reversing this big old beast a piece of cake really also last thing we did on the back was put this step on it just had a normal bumper before and i felt that the back doors were super vulnerable if someone was going to tap into the back of us uh, and also it's super handy having the step there for when we you know need to get up in the back and stuff like that all right well let's go inside and have a look what we've done there As you probably know there's maybe a million different ways you can do a van layout and because this is our van number three 
we have really put some effort and thought into what's the best layout you know that would suit our way of living and traveling I think I even did a quick SketchUp model to test different ways and different options but because we have the flares as Sam said this has allowed a completely different layout which means the bed goes width ways and that gifted us 45 centimeters inside um, and allowed us to do a permanent seating area and the lovely OK kitchen. So our kitchen is very similar like we had in our van number two. Um, it's a 120 with uh, IKEA units that you get as a sand standard sort of setup um, that we then modified so we cut the back at an angle so it fits the curvature of the van and also we've cut out the hole for the oven so we have an oven which is amazing we can have fish fingers we can have pizza we can have toast the oven is honestly such an amazing feature of this van i love it and um, the sink we have the same stainless steel sink we had in the van number two and the tap those were the things that worked really well um, the gas hob as well two burner hob works great we have lpg uh, gas connected to it sam will talk you through um the plumbing electrics and gas our services in a minute the splashback um it's again ikea board that we think fits the sort of palette of the kitchen really well um, we have permanently sort of fixed little holders that's the sound of the fridge kicking in uh, we have permanent holders for our toothbrushes toothpaste um, washing up things we've got our spice rack and another addition that we've not done before but I think we saw in um, someone else's van there was a brilliant idea that we absolutely love to actually have a fixed soap and shampoo shower gel uh, dispensers so that means they're not flying around easy to find always there up here we have some shelves and um, so initially we had the shelf that was running open all the way through but we did a little modification after the first couple trips um, adding these two overhead cupboards that open up and they store so much stuff it's a lot more functional than having just a shelf being able to close it down with a little magnet hold it means that things don't really fly out so we have all our teas our coffees our mugs and then in the other one which is the same hold with the magnet uh, we have our medicines we have kind of random bits and bobs. these sort of baskets are really helpful kind of holding things in it's easy to take out because I'm quite sure I can't actually see what's on the top cupboard most of the time um, the lights as well they're fitted under under this little lip um, so it's nicely concealed uh, which is really lovely in here we have all our cutleries a little bit messy in here as usual the oven and then this cupboard is storing our sort of sanitary things like our porta potty uh, which has its own little slot which is really snug so it doesn't fly around so when we want to take out the porta potty oops it comes out like that we use it and then we put it back in just like this so our great oven is, uh, it, it seems almost like a conventional house oven, just a bit small in size. It's got two racks. We've got a little tray that, um, you know, can hold buns. Oh, <laughs> what's going on there? Oh no. Oh no. I forgot. <laughs> um, so these things happen in the van. I don't know how, I don't know why, but we have a bun. Um, don't mind that <laughs> just quickly there is no bun in the oven people and a one really cool sneaky feature that well it's like instead of having a safe in the van you could probably have a super sneaky cupboard that it's really hard to show but there is a sneaky cupboard above the oven that holds up all our pots and pans it's all in there again a little bit messy a little bit snug but there is just you know in the van everything has to live in a bit of a snug 
sort of neighborhood. <laughs> it's in there. It's in there. So, moving on to our seating area. <sighs> so this is our seating area when we have our more permanent park spot overnight when we just want to chill out and hang out or sometimes with some friends because now we have the sofa this one is a bit more like a bonus seating when we need a bit of extra seating space to be fair now we have basie he loves sitting here and hanging out so he can sit here and then watch us sit on the sofa on the other side so underneath these seats we have all our electrics and also our diesel heater so here you can see this trunking um, covered by plywood and this is where the outlet for the heater is and it's really lovely and it gets really warm as well in the winter so we we turn it on and it warms us up like a sauna so on the other side we have our IKEA sofa which we modified so again so it fits here really really snug um, it just somehow it's made perfectly for the van who knew under the sofa we have our little larder cupboard so this little drawer is on wheels and it holds all our dry goods pasta beans cans sugar rice all those kind of things that don't expire so quickly and on the other side this is where our little buddy Basie sleeps this is his little spot it's got a tray um, this plastic tray um, which is really good you know in case we need to clean it he gets really muddy sometimes or sandy so it's easy to take it out and clean it and it's full of his toys as usual over here this is again probably my, one of my favorite additions in this van that really changed how we live and how we use the space so this is a lagoon swivel table I think they usually are used in boats and yachts and things like that um, what we did we attached the base to the side of the sofa and the top bit is um, it's actually a door from a kitchen you know in Ikea you have that department where they're just like random discounted bits and we just found one which fits, fits <laughs> which fits perfectly um, and this allows us to have meals together and you know sit together or um, do something on the laptop etc so it's just really really nice um, addition to the van and it's got a little lock so you can screw it up so it doesn't move when we're driving in theory <laughs> in theory we well there's always something in the van that you forget to you know lock um, we used to have a toilet that used to fly out or sometimes <laughs> the cupboards come out or there's always something that before you drive like how we lock this how we fix this there's always a bit of something that wobbles in the van next to our seating area uh, we have a couple of little things this was a gift uh, from my parents um, that has our key hooks then we have a little mirror which again usually probably used in bathrooms because it's got one side um, that's got the zoomed in uh, mirror and we we fix it with a little um, leather strap so it doesn't move when we drive so here we have our 12 volt switch we've got some USBs and the switch for the USBs here as well and a picture of us dancing because we like dancing we really like dancing <laughs> Okay, on the other side, we have our lovely chest type of fridge, uh, which is again 12 volts, isn't it? It's a 12 volt chest type of fridge. We had it in the previous van and it worked really well, so we got it again. And I know it's really nice to have a regular fridge, but this is so much more energy efficient because when you open it, the, the cold doesn't sort of fall out the door and it all keeps it in inside. And the space is enough as well. It's got a little ice cube tray. Um, and yes, we have to kind of shop a little bit every time, um, maybe once a week or so. Um, but it's lovely to have, you know, a cold beer or cheese or butter, things like that. Lovely. Here we have a little ledge for putting your drink down. Again, this sofa is just such a luxury in this van. I absolutely love it. Here we have a little latch 
to access our LPG gas um, and it's a requirement to have it sealed properly so I will explain a bit more about gas and that um, and then there's one little sneaky cupboard for slightly taller items like drinks, bottled water, uh, olive oil um, and just generally you know things can be tucked in there so also in this area we have our 12 volt fan which is fitted into the roof light so if we're doing any cooking or any other you know um steamy activities and steamy activities that's a really <laughs> wrong wrong way of explaining making a cup of tea you know or cooking or having the oven on or having a shower so this is a roof light with a fan the other roof light doesn't have a fan but it's actually enough to turn one on and then you can feel the the pull and the ventilation circulating around the van which is great if you're lying in bed turn this fan on and you just feel this lovely breeze our lights have touch sensors um, so they're very easy to operate uh, what else we have in here should we move to the bedroom area oh that's a oh. question <laughs> that's not an invitation in the bedroom area we have our storage cupboards for clothes so we have two separate ones they're exactly the same size one for me and one for Sam here we are there so when you pop them open they stay open which is very nice to kind of get the stuff out uh, we have our fan we have our under cupboard lights again we have some more of these um, touch sensor lights and we have um, a couple down lights for reading above, above the beds we've put a couple um, bungee nets for storage and they usually hold our bedtime books um earplugs eye mask you know just kind of little things that you just put in there just before you go to sleep the bed itself we have a regular double um ikea mattress that we use in our house so again just having a comfortable sleep in the van is so important after a whole day of driving or traveling it's just nice to go straight to bed that you don't have to fold out or you know make every morning or every evening we had our first van where we would have to you know do the bed to pull it out every evening and it's just such a fab so having a proper double bed with a nice mattress it's just really 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 nice another addition in this van which we never had before you saw it from the outside just earlier um, but having a little window by the bed is just amazing and you know sometimes in the van in such a small space you get a bit of a I don't know like cabin cabin fever or, or I don't know how you call it when you just can be a bit claustrophobic on or you wake up in a new place and you don't really know where you are and it's just so nice to pop the the curtain up open and uh, have a little look where you are another addition we have um, is these uh, curtains that are not really for so much um, the light but when we open the back doors um, it's really nice to have a bit of privacy if some you know one of us is still in bed and the other one needs to get something from the garage or if we park somewhere where we just don't want people kind of peeking into the van we have these um, curtains that can close off our bedroom area and just makes it really nice just like that here we go sleep mode so when we're getting ready for bed we close all the curtains so we've closed the back one and then these ones are also held by the same leather straps which actually are for bicycle uh, wicker baskets a little bit random but you find these things that work in the van just great and doesn't really matter what they're for so one side of the curtain has magnet attachments that clip to the body of the van it's covered by felt but still strong enough for the magnets to work and then the other side we've attached a velcro strip so that seals the edge very nicely and again we tested it from outside you can't see when the lights on so it's really good for stealth mode 
and finally the sliding door don't look too closely they're a bit wobbly but they do the job you know they have the magnets around the edge and seals it perfectly so now we have the all three openings all the three windows completely sealed um so sometimes if we parked you know in a city or you know in a spot where we just really want to stay stealth we close out the windows you can't see from outside what's inside and because our van doesn't really you know give away that it's a camper van we don't have any stickers or it, it looks like just a regular cargo van and we quite like that we just can be a you know little secret travelers in the van stealthy stealthy mode so uh, above the cab we made a overhead cupboard shelf storage space um, so that's just using the sort of perimeter um, and then cladding it in in um, what's it called felt felt material so that usually stores our you know bulkier items like duvets or pillows or um, often just our jackets rain jackets this camera case and things can just be stuffed in there really really handy to have that space and the cab still has plenty of headroom in there so this is our fire extinguisher now that sounds really weird fire extinguisher that's what you call it yeah, yeah. to extinguish extinguish a fire it's really crazy after seeing um the travel beans um video it just kind of seems ridiculous having such a small uh fire extinguisher we even consider getting a bigger one um and having it in the garage but then is it really convenient you know and it's, it makes you think uh you know how important it is to have one is at least you know if something happens here in the kitchen it's important thing to have we have our monoxide detector and we have our inverter here <laughs> followed by a lovely gift from our wonderful friends Ivaris and Maria that gifted us this horseshoe which in Lithuanian tradition is a symbol of good luck and it says Aptelushema which means Aptelis family which is our family now on the other side we have more electrics, um, our solar panel thingamajigs, Sam will tell you more about it. So now we are at the back of the van and unfortunately it's a bit embarrassing to show you because it's a total mess. Uh, but we do have some sort of organised chaos underneath the bed in the garage area. On this door obviously we've got the window and we've actually got a nice little window sill uh, for putting a cup of tea when uh, you know we're in bed in the morning and looking out the window especially if we're in like a picturesque view or something. And then down here we've just got another trusty spice rack that I'm using for carrying some like citronella candles, um, battery charger for my impact driver, tripod, uh, little axe for cutting firewood and then on this side we've got a little bungee strap storage thing which I don't really use it for much. Why is there a mirror in there? Uh, it just seems to happen to live there at the moment. Weird. Um, but one thing when we were designing all of our vans is that we wanted to be able to get out of the van in emergency um, very easily. So we can get out both the back doors and the side door. Uh, if one of them is blocked we can get out the other door. We just need to put our hand down the side of the mattress and we can still operate the handle uh, to get out the van. Starting on this side, uh, we've got at the top, we've got our extendable shower curtain pole, which is super handy. If we want to put it here, then we can um, have a shower outside. And then just underneath that is another 12 volt socket uh, for the shower and a couple of USBs there if I want to charge things. Uh, while I'm in bed or whatever but having said that there's so many USB sockets in this van uh, it's a bit over the top <laughs> uh, down here we've just got a few bits and pieces got the toilet the chemical for the toilet uh, I've got a little toolbox that's full of stuff believe it or not I did go through Damn. believe it or not I did go through that before we left the UK um, so everything in there is what we need um, I've got some spare cable here one upgrade that we're going to do after we've done this video, we're waiting for it to be delivered, is to install a 12 volt foot switch uh, for the water pump. 
sometimes when we're using water we don't want to just leave the tap open because it wastes so much water and of course water is like number one commodity uh, in a camper van so that's on the way i'll be using that cable to wire it in when it finally gets here and then we've got some jump leads as well to get us out of trouble if we uh yeah if we need them so the boxes the storage that we've got underneath the van consist of these big boxes and i just picked them up from b and q uh in the uk and they're somewhat structured as to what's in each this is van related stuff so i've got like ice scraper it's very hard to believe at the moment but uh, ice scraper there um, air compressor for the wheels some spare oil for the rear diff uh, some filters there for when i do a service a um, bit of spray paint and a spare gas canister for our backup hob in case we run out of gas in this one is all of basie's stuff so we've got like treats for basie the shower is actually in there uh, treats for basie um, his winter coat <laughs> Uh, 10 meter lead, brush, all that sort of stuff. And then behind here is all of Basie's food. Now Basie has a really sensitive belly and when we left the UK we thought maybe we can buy food en route but we had just got him on perfect food after a year and a half. He's having like perfect and and it's taken a long while to get there so we didn't want to take him off his regular food. He has to have single protein, he can't have chicken, has to have turkey, can't have grains. So yeah, he's on a very particular diet and we got him on this stuff when we were back home and it was really good. So we're now carrying 75 kilograms of it around in the van everywhere we go, brilliant stuff. And next to Basie's food is um, like homey stuff, like we've got a load of paperwork in there. And then up here is a bit of a medical box. We've got some COVID tests in there, some ice packs, first aid kit, stuff like that. Ah, and while we're in there, we've got 40 litres of water back up um, in these two jerry cans. And then at the back, we've got our four 25 litre water containers. And I'll show you them from the actual living area of the van. It's easier to show you from there. Um, the reason we've done four 25 litre tanks is because if we ever need to take the tank out to take it to a tap to fill it up we can we do carry a hose as well but it's good to be able to remove them replace them clean them out whatever having four 25 liters is a lot easier than one 100 liter tank uh, and also we were able to place them really evenly in the van so they're kind of in the middle to spread the load so under this side of the van we've got our collapsible bucket which we use for the shower we pop this out maybe put a kettle of water in there, fill it up with cold, and then we can drop our submersible pump for our shower in that. This is our actual shower basin, if you like. Here is the shower itself. It's like a submersible pump one, um, and the shower head is here. It's 12 volt, so we can plug it in the 12 volt socket just behind me here, or or inside the van itself. Oh, one last thing, toilet roll. Lots of toilet roll. And we've got a 20 litre jerry can for diesel and access to our gas bottle locker for when we need to remove the bottle to refill it. It's a refillable gasset seven kilo LPG bottle that is totally legal to fill at the petrol station. Uh, you need little adapters. There's like three little adapters for the different connections throughout Europe. We've got them, it's refillable on the road, we've only ever filled it once and when it runs out we'll use our backup hob until we can find a new LPG station. Although we should actually fill it up before we go to Finland. I think we will. Because Finland doesn't have LPG, but everywhere else does. And then we have our hose on our little rack here for filling up our water. Okay, so this is our shower setup. We have our big bucket, as we've just shown you. We've got our 12 volt shower itself. So we can stick this in our 12 volt socket over here. We can stick this inside the sink with the, with the plug in, obviously. And then we've got the shower head here. So our particular setup takes two shower curtains. I don't know why. And the height of these shower curtains is exactly 1.8 meters. So that's perfect. I'm one eight three centimeters tall so that's six foot um exactly and we now put a hula hoop round here 
And when we hang this, it hangs just off the floor of the bucket. We store the hula hoop down this side. We pop that out. And then there's these four hooks in the ceiling that we can hang it from. And there we have it, that's our shower setup. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got two 100 watt solar panels on the roof and they supply power to our two 105 amp hour leisure batteries. They're not lithium, they're just normal leisure batteries. We've also got a 240 volt power inverter, pure sine wave one. We've got a 1000 watt one, which means that we can charge laptops, um, although we have 12 volt power charger for the laptops. Uh, but we can use our food blender and you know charge the battery for the digital camera and all that sort of stuff so that's our electricity setup our heating is a five kilowatt chinese diesel heater we did put a two kilowatt one in when we first converted started converting the van and then when we drove over to lithuania last winter we actually realized that a two kilowatt um, Chinese diesel heater wasn't enough. We have 100 litres of water and that's plumbed into um, a pressure sensitive pump which means basically that we can leave it on all of the time and when the pump recognises that the system is up to pressure it doesn't keep pumping and building more and more pressure and bursting pipes. So the way that we access our water tanks to fill them up, take them out, clean them, whatever, is to move the table out of the way and then the way that I've cannibalized this IKEA sofa is we take the back off the sofa and then we can access underneath the bed. The back of this particular sofa has this metal frame in the back of the cushion and that slides in and hooks in one of the beams for the bed and that forms the back of the sofa. And now here you can access the four water tanks that we've got. We've got two isolator switches or valves here. So we're either pulling water from these two or from these two. And then when one of them runs out, we can just switch it over very easily just with the flick of that. And if we get in real trouble, we've got 40 liters back up over there. If we're really out in the wilderness somewhere in Lapland or who knows where we're going to be. All right, guys. So this is it. This is our band tour. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, we tried covering all the bits and remembering all the little things, but there's just so many. Um, and yeah, if you like the video, please subscribe to our channel, um, follow us along our trip. And if there is anything that you liked in particular, please leave us a comment. We always enjoy reading your comments. Or if there is anything you would have done differently or you know, have any tips or advice, we're always excited to hear that. Don't forget to follow us on Instagram as well. We'll be posting daily on our trip. We're now on the road for six months. Uh, we're gonna go up to Lapland and then down from the north of Norway, down to Croatia and then across Italy and into Portugal before we go home, I think. If we can get that far, uh, we'll see when our money runs out. And normally we post our videos on every Sunday. So we try and keep the consistency and post once a week. So you should be able to see all our adventures in the upcoming six months. Thanks a lot for joining us, everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Over. And out. out.